morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroy, your host, and we're in luck because we're in the Ag Engineering Department, and we have A.J. Sharda, Assistant Professor in the Department, going to talk to us about precision agriculture. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. See you in a minute. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and with us we have Dr. A.J. Sharda, Assistant Professor in the Department of Ag Engineering. And uh, A.J., thanks for being on the show. And we're going to be talking about precision ag. So tell me, kind of give us a definition and a little short history of precision ag. Sure, Jim. Thank you for uh, having me over. Um, well, uh, Precision Ag, uh, from where we started all, we wanted to learn more about our fields. We want to have better information about our soils, better information about our yields from those areas, and we want to be smarter about making decisions on input use mm -hmm. and its management. It, more, efficiency. more efficiency. Better efficiency. Better efficiency. Yeah, because better efficiency probably will drive to more profitability. That was our goal. Hmm. You know, I want to have dollars and cents at the end of the year. That is, that is what I earn. That is where I do my business. Right. So that was the, that was the big goal. Uh, and if you allow me, I, I would say that it all started around 1995, 96, when the GPS and the yield monitor starts to um, show up in the market. Um, there were some early adopters about um, about that technology who were very excited to mm -hmm. kind of try out what those systems are and mm -hmm. and what they have to offer for their production system. So during the time period of 95, 2000, there were some early adopters looking at, you know, what, what an automated guidance or a GPS in terms of giving me some idea on where I am on my field and the idea about yields can give me. So that was, that is what I called was the first phase of um, some Precision, precision ag, ag mm -hmm. getting started. The next phase. The next phase was I would I, I what I put and I really want to give credit to Terry Griffin. We were we were working we are working on some 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 paper, but that came from that discussion. Is the second phase is 2000 to 2005, mm -hmm. where you start to see technologies like um, uh, section control. You know technologies which started to move from more mechanical to pneumatic control uh -huh, or right. hydraulic system starts to show up. Mm -hmm. Now I can turn on and off my, you know, planter row units or my boom sections. I can turn on and off, and that was around the time when I then some individual nozzle control was, you know, kind of around to show up. Mm -hmm. You know, so that way um, I, I have some information on what I want to do from my, from you know, from my yield monitors. I have some assistance on my my guidance, mm -hmm. and now I can turn things on and off mm -hmm. based on where I want to put my input less or more. Okay. The next sec section. The next section I put is in terms of uh, 2005 and 2010, where people start to use variable rate technology. I can vary right. the rate of fertilizer, pesticide, and seeds, and so and so forth. Mm -hmm. And final stage, which which I call now, is people are using all this information to make smart decisions on input use, management, and its application. Okay. And so. So how do, so now you're talking about single rows, basically. Right, exactly. Yeah, turning on, on and off single rows, single booms, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Now we have systems where we can apply product accurately in terms of what that individual nozzle has to do or a single plant or row unit has to do in terms of, you know, putting nutrients or chemicals or seeds from... Okay. from AJ, we've got to take a break, and we've got a we've got a planner behind us. We're going to start talking about when we get back. Sure, so we've got to take a break, folks. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas, on I-70 at Exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's main street and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day. And I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elk they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. 
People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer and Dr. A.J. Sharda from Ag Engineering here at K-State is still with us. He didn't run off during the break. Thank, thank you, A.J. You know, looking at this planter, it looks like a sci-fi sci planter because it's not anything like the, the box planters that I'm, I'm used to. So, A.J., tell us what's, what's new uh, in the way of planters. Sure, Jim. Um, so, so the planters of uh, today's age are much different than what we used to have before. Um, I would say three to five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the major change or one of the significant change which has happened on the planter is that now we have electric motors driving my seed mm -hmm. metering units rather than mechanical or hydraulic systems with uh, a lot of sprockets and gears and you know, in chain drives and worm gears and so on and so forth. That, that those, those pockets um, gave a lot of, caused a lot of baldness, people pulling their hairs out on, on which sprocket goes where. Absolutely right. If you have to maintain a, you know, planter over the season, you have to take off, you know, tons of, uh, you know, sprocket shafts, you know, gears, maintain See, right? them. Corn. Bit, exactly. Whether beans. it's corn or beans and all or, that Or stuff. Milo. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, the one thing I want to point out here is that this is, uh, this is the heart and soul of the entire thing, uh, which we call as a, as a electric motor. Uh -huh. Now, this electric motor has, uh, you know, uh, has, a, has a little gearbox inbuilt in it. Uh -huh. And there's a very important component which is called planter control module. Planter control module. Uh, row okay. unit, row control, sorry, row control module. Okay. So what okay. this does is that it gets all the information in terms of what is the instantaneous speed of this row unit. Mm -hmm. It gets what population I have to plant mm -hmm. and then it decide what RPM I should spin this, you know, uh, metering, you know, plate to get my right population. In that row? In, in that row, in, in that particular row. So that is one of the biggest advantages of uh, of the newer planting systems that we have nowadays. And again, it's called a row? It's called row control module. Row control module, row okay. control module because it is controlling how that individual row is going to behave. Okay. It will, it, you can also have an added advantage of if it is a, you know, we, we can talk about some, something about multi-hybrid thing, but if it is, if you want to do a multi-hybrid aspect, it will have the aspect of which seed type it has to, uh, you know, plant. And then if you have two of those units, one can switch off and other can come on if you are planting two hybrids side by side. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, it, it looks pretty simple. I mean, there's no gaskets. Uh, uh, it seems pretty, pretty it is, simple. It is very simple. The only thing is, if you see here, that I have a, I have a, I have a motor, I have a shaft, mm -hmm. and I have a, a seed metering plate on plate. top of it. Okay. And there are a few shims on the back which make sure that the, that the plate doesn't rub on the back. Uh -huh. And my my amperage on my my motor is is maintained, so it is running free and without any obstructions from behind. And this is a uh, this is uh, cuts down on your uh, singles, singles and doubles and, and that sort of thing. Yes. So this this decides how much seed it has to come on the box, mm -hmm. and this this portion decides you know how I, how do I want to set on my singulation. Another thing I want to point when you talk about box planter, mm -hmm. that these planters are seed on demand. Uh -huh. There is no seed here. The seed is continuously fed into my I see. seed okay. unit. Mm -hmm. So now I am maintaining a constant downforce as well. You know, mm -hmm. there is a constant weight on my row unit. If, you know, when you have... Right. Oh, that's right. Okay. And we have a full box of seed versus right. Right. Uh, on demand. So we got it. seed in demand. Yeah. AJ, we got to take a break. Okay. Folks, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. See you in a second. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. 
we predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well in their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. Dr. A.J. Sharda from Ag Engineering is with us. And uh, AJ, we talked a little bit about the, the electric unit here. Mm -hmm. I notice a lot of wires on this planter. Right. What are some of the other functions that you, we might have or see in this new style of planter? Yes, Jim. Uh, so, you know, with, the, with having these electric motors, it, it provides a, a lot of scalability and additional functionality which comes at little to no cost to the producers. The scalability? Scalability. Okay. So when I talk about scalability, means that if I want to add a functionality of contour farming or turn compensation, I only have to add a small piece of software mm -hmm. and nothing else. Now, for example, in our older planters, when I'm turning on rows, when I'm planting along the contours, all of my row units are planting at same RPM. Means right. if, if if I'm turning on the on on my left, yeah, then there are the outside rows planting uh, f uh, going right. faster than the inside. inside. Yes. Right. So you have spaced out seeds and two two tighter you know right higher population. Higher population. Now what the turn compensation feature does is that it tells each row unit its own speed mm -hmm. and now it can slow down and speed up the RPM of that row unit mm -hmm. to maintain the exact spacing and population you need in the, in the field. Right, so the inside row is going to be planting at 28,000 or whatever and so, so is the outside So row. is the outside okay. because in other cases you might be planting any the difference could be 15, 20, 30,000 population, right, seed right. population. That. Yeah, that is one, one very good example on that. Okay. The other thing is electric seed meters have given us a functionality that we are now capable of having a multi-hybrid planting system. So when I talk about multi-hybrid means I can have two of these electric row units sitting side by side. On the same row? On the same row. Uh -huh. And then I have a seed tender which have a hybrid A and hybrid B. Uh -huh. Now we talk about I'm, I was sending population and speed to the, this uh -huh. row control module. Uh -huh. I'm sending, uh, and I have another information on whether I'm planting hybrid A or hybrid B. <laughs> now when it knows that I am planting hybrid B, uh -huh. this row is going to shut off uh -huh. and the other row unit is going to start up to plant the hybrid I want. Uh -huh. So when you talk about some of the older planter system with mechanical or hydraulic systems, we were not able to do that kind of a thing. We would not have been able to do that kind of a thing. AJ, thank you. We've got to take a break. Thank you. Folks, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. KFRM is Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Well, my name is Bill Meredith and I uh, farm about 7,000 acres. We raise about 150 head of Longhorn cattle. It was real frustrating for me to not be able to have my hands on it. When I'd come down in the morning, almost cry because my back was hurting so bad and my memory is so bad. And I'd been to Mayo's clinic uh, feeling like it was 
not, nothing was happening as fast as I'd like to see it happen. My land guy come and pulled up beside me and he asked me how I was doing. I told him I wasn't doing ortho -derm. He was telling me about this treatment they were doing down there in Manhattan. Anyway, we come up here and got this treatment, put some in my shoulders because I couldn't bend my head like this. I finally uh, started getting my uh, memory back and I'm able to do about everything I was doing before, maybe more. I, I went outside and raised my hand and praised the Lord, you know. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. Dr. A.J. Sharda is still with us. And A.J., we've talked about the, the, the electric motor and some of the other uh, aspects. Uh, how about planting speed? Because I know farmers like to go fast, but they worry about dropping, dropping the right number of seeds. And, and we'll talk about depth later, but let's talk about speed and, uh, and dropping the seed. Okay. Uh, that's a that's an excellent question and and uh, something I really want to discuss uh, with with growers. Uh, now with with electric seed meters, um, and generally when you are talk about speed, most of the people want to still plant at five miles per hour. Right. That is their sweet speed, and you know they don't want to go faster and they don't want to go slower in mm -hmm. terms of productivity and making sure they can hit the planting windows and mm -hmm. all those days. Now with the with the newer systems, we wanted to check two things. One how good these motors are in terms of spinning, you know, maintaining right. RPM for a certain population. Mm -hmm. Second thing we wanted to check was how good they are in terms of simulation because there are two different aspects to it. Mm -hmm. First thing, the motor has to maintain the RPM. Right. And then the metering unit has to simulate and put one seed at a time in right. terms of what I need. Right. What we, we did a, a lot of research over the last two or three years uh, we have a lab here, uh, which is a host advanced planting systems lab. Mm. Uh, we have some growers we call them, you know, uh, on farm, on farm, farm studies. Mm. Yeah, with, with growers in and around Manhattan. And what we learn is that these electric motors are very accurate in terms of maintaining the RPM for a certain ground speed. Okay. So that means that if I am going at a certain speed and I want X RPMs, they are pretty dead on in terms of what RPM they want to maintain. Okay. Ironically, they get more and more better if they go faster. <laughs> they get more precise? More or? precise. Uh -huh. and, and a lot of people ask me why, uh -huh. is because there is, there is better averaging going on in terms of sampling of how fast I'm going right now uh -huh. and what kind of a correction I have to main, make uh -huh. to maintain, to, to, to get the right RPM. The thing I want to add is that we slow down and speed up you know, a number of times mm -hmm. right in the field mm -hmm. now these motors can keep up can step up to the next needed speed mm -hmm. in less than half a second so if you decide to go from six to seven and a half to eight miles uh -huh. within half a second it will get to that rpm of the seed plate uh -huh. to start giving you the, the spacing in the right population aj we got to take a break thank you thank you Jim. we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. Welcome to our bar B, 8,000 plus square feet western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's our bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. Our bar B, where western is a way of life. 
That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Thanks for joining us in this last segment of That's My Farm. Dr. A.J. Charter is with us and you know we've talked a lot about this planter. Last but not least is planting depth. Because I know we were talking about speed in the last section and I know for like working with grain drills, the faster you go, they come out of the ground. It's like skiing, mm -hmm. uh, water skiing. You faster you go, you get out of the water. Yep. So, how do you keep from getting planting too shallow with the higher speeds? Excellent, uh, excellent uh, question, Jim. And this is this is one of the, the most uh, exciting part of the technology as well. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the planters in the market, uh, be it Horsch or John Deere or Kinsey or Precision Planting or, uh -huh. or or egg core case, they have a hydraulic downforce control system. Mm -hmm. So what that, that's what that is here. That is what is here. This is a hydraulic cylinder here, mm -hmm. and there's a brain back in the in the in the tractor cab which decides something to do based on soil conditions. Okay. Now, what we what we do in a typical situation is we we we, we set our gauge wheel, you know, load pressure here, mm -hmm. you know, gauge mm -hmm. wheel loading, mm -hmm. de depending on what depth we want to plant, mm -hmm. right? So we, we, we go a certain distance, we see whether we are at the right depth, and I see my gauge wheel has a certain load or not. Right. Right? Well, mm -hmm. That was the one thing. Now, what what happens is that when you go in the field, the soil texture can change. Across the field. Across the field. Mm -hmm. Soil texture in combination of moisture can change. Right. Which can change the requirement of the opening disc in terms of the load it needs to get to the right depth. Right, to cut through the residue, cut through the soil, down to the depth we want to drop the seed. Absolutely, absolutely. Now when that happens, then that is a situation when that 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 would be still right if I have the the load which was the leftover load on my gauge wheels. Mm -hmm. But if I do not have enough, then I'm gonna start planting shallow. Right. Right? That is not good for seed double the root development or it may the not crown develop, development right or it may not just emerge at all right and then there may be situations where this disc does not need that kind of loading okay and all the load comes on my gauge wheels because they are trying to keep the disc not going deep right then i will have excessive sidewall compaction and you know what happens with excessive sidewall compaction Right, the uh, root development root issues. Development issues right. and, you know, late okay. emergence. And all okay, that. I'll bite. So how do you keep from doing that? So <laughs> now what the system does is that I mean, I, when I've set my planter for depth and spacing and everything, I set a certain target gauge wheel load on hmm. of my gauge wheel. Right. Now, when I need a lot more here, mm -hmm. then it's going to take off from my gauge wheel, mm -hmm. but my system will know that, oh, I do not have the kind of target loading I need on my gauge wheels. So it will use this hydraulic cylinder to put an extra 50 pound or 20 pound or 100 pounds to get onto the mm -hmm. to my row unit. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, if this doesn't need too much and I have a lot more, mm -hmm. then it also senses that, oh, there is too much loading on my gauge wheel and then it offloads that weight mm -hmm. to maintain the consistent loading on the gauge wheel, consistent depth, uh -huh. And then, yep, you rightly pointed, this is my gauge wheel load sensor which is giving me a feedback in terms of what is the instantaneous load on my gauge wheels. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right there. All right there. <laughs> I'll be done. All right there, all automatic. And some people do ask me that how quick they are. Mm -hmm. They, we have seen where, where the requirement goes up and down by up to 200 pounds mm -hmm. and the change happens in less than a second. So hydraulic systems are much more consistent and faster in terms of response. AJ, I really appreciate you taking time. Thank appreciate you, you being there. This Thank is you. really interesting. Thank you. Folks, thanks for being with us on this uh, episode of That's My Farm. And don't forget, next week about this same time, we're going to have another one for you. See you then. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.